decided to drive to Lisbon now <laughs> because the beach is not very comfortable to be at the beach because it's windy and, and it actually um, gets really busy there now as it's well it's getting busy as well we decided then let's go to the city because we can drive there uh, we have AC in the car which is comfortable and we can explore a little bit Lisbon because when we were living there we did not explore that much of the city isn't it just uh, found a nice park, it's uh, Park Eduardo the Seventh, apparently. Uh, walking up a little bit there, there's a beautiful uh, view over all Lisbon down to the river. And yeah, we had a, a nice day here, a little bit driving around uh, through the lovely streets. It's everything more colorful than it was when we lived here. Uh, it's obviously blooming, uh, it looks like the sunlight is different. And yeah, people are more out, which makes the city more lively, lively, li lively, lively. And yeah, they're all nicely wearing masks and queuing. Uh, you'll see this all in our uh, today's experience. Yeah. So we thought we'd do a little bit Q and A because um, we get kind of the same questions over and over again from friends and family and some of our non-family and friends viewers we are very happy to have you <laughs> um, so one of them is if we regret to have started when we have started back in March which was obviously not the perfect time because that was exactly where COVID-19 turned into epidemic mm -hmm. but we did not plan that uh, especially that to travel especially this time I mean we kind of planned it because we we started this process at a certain time but at this time we didn't know about the the virus and the pandemic that's coming up so we decided somewhere back in November we decided in November but then we gave our notice in December yeah, yeah so November, so November, December, and then we had two months notice which basically got us to the end of February and that's where we left London and arrived in Lisbon. At this time there were zero cases here and yeah, it just started to snowball from there. Uh, and within two weeks the city was in a lockdown and obviously and everybody was asking us like, oh, that's a per like a very bad timing t for travel and everybody were worried about us, but we felt like it was still great decision, perfect decision that we, we are here in Portugal, even in this time. I think it's even better than if we would stay in London. That's in my experience. Because we have, <laughs> I know we would were not it, not able to go out, but we, we could still enjoy sunshine and the nature from our balcony at least. And I think we felt kind of safe here. Mm. Uh, I think the Portuguese government and uh, the people here, they took it quite serious uh, from the beginning. So yeah. they started to close quite early and like. Uh, enforce things like really responsible so we felt really safe uh, being here and I think we can, we can see this now now we know a couple of local people and when we talk with them 
they're all very proud how their country handled the situation and yeah as I said I think we, we felt safe here uh, everyone was very supportive like the people we we, we st like rent the Airbnb from uh, the local shops where we uh, buy our groceries uh, kind of became friends uh, and yeah it felt kind of the right thing to stay here yeah and I think now yeah it's already like about two weeks since lockdown is lifted lifted and yeah. now we're able to rent a car and now drive around still you know keeping social distancing wearing masks you, having um, sanitizing gel it feels like that's the most hygienic time ever that's true, um, that's true. which kind of brings us to the next question which is the topic of slow travel um, we haven't really, uh, let, let's say, well, we didn't know that this is even a thing. It's like we call it slow travel because we feel like we're traveling slow compared to people we follow and inspire us because they're kind of full-time traveling uh, or they did at least before the, uh, the pandemic. But for us, our goal was we want to live a kind of a normal life we want to work during the week. We want to live in a place. We want to like live a, local, a life in a local community for a while and then move on and travel that way through the world. That was kind of our um, intention from the beginning. Yeah. And we call that slow travel because it feels slow to us. Uh, and yeah, I think we found a couple of, it's not very widespread, but we found a couple of uh, other travelers who also slow travel. We found a couple of people trying to explain what slow travel is. Yeah. <laughs> and it seems to be a mm -hmm. little bit different for different people. So there's, it's not like a, a clear thing like you're a digital nomad or you are like, I don't know. So those kind of terms are very clear by now. There's a huge community doing that. But slow travel, I feel like it's not that widespread. Right? Mm -hmm. So what, what does it mean for you, this slow travel? For me, slow travel was, I mean, it is not flying very often. I, I like to fly, but not like every week, every two weeks, every three weeks, even like every month. It's a bit uh, too much. So it, I find it stressful to take lots of flights it's tiring it's draining for me personally <laughs> and i guess always like when you're constantly on the move you mm -hmm. constantly need to figure out like where do you eat like you constantly sleep in a different bed uh, some people they might be thrilled by that but i think we we love um or especially you love like specific like uh, lifestyle in terms of eating, healthy eating. And uh, when you're on the go, yeah, you constantly it's very hard to. You to eat stay. crap, right? Like if you if you look like I mean crap, Not like crap, you you eat lots harder. of you eat out a lot, and you eat obviously less healthy food. Let's let's say like that. It's not crap. Like there's like I, I think there's lots of good food. Like these people who travel full time, they eat lots of street food lots of their travel is around food mm -hmm. so they go out purposefully like to explore those things and share those things uh, we also like to do that or we wanted to do that during the weekends um, which didn't happen because everything closed obviously so we we always looking for local like vendors stores like local health stores organic stores local businesses local businesses yeah like we, uh, renting we a that. car was also a local business yeah we, very we, personal actually we discover more and more so the car we rent today for example is a, a small company in Sisimbra. uh shout out to francisco who is the owner of the company uh he is really really supportive uh, very helpful uh he does so many things like he has guided tours, uh, he does transfers, renting cars, renting bikes, uh, and so on and so on. So I'll put a link uh, to his 
uh, rental company in the description so when you're around here in Sesimbra uh, give him a call connect with him he is really a lovely guy um, yeah but we love to connect with local businesses uh, and stores cook at home and I think that's kind of part of slow traveling we're really living in the place for a while so now I'm feeling like home yeah. away from home yeah well, wherever we are is our home away from home yeah that's good so with you home. you have your I mean where we are now she has like a lovely a lovely little organic store, store. and they're really lovely people uh, we'll try to make a separate episode around that store because it's just amazing what they do what they do for their community uh, like what they do for healthy lifestyle uh, in this little village where we are it's truly amazing so yeah like that's slow travel for us it's like uh, we, we want to travel see new places experience uh, new places <laughs> see experience it has have like a little bit uh, it's like a I think it's like a, a home base you know it's like a little bit home base for a while getting used to that getting the environment to know and then move on to the next so yeah that's slow travel it's probably there's lots more to say about that and we'll think about it because we get this question more and more we're like what is it with this slow travel ah oh, yeah and one thing that I wanted to actually point out to the slow travel is the time now after COVID-19 because that's obviously a question we all ask ourselves like not just people who travel but um, everyone I guess but us uh, with traveling uh, there seems to be a new way of traveling and that's kind of gearing towards slow travel it's like when you when you look at Airbnb for example their whole focus now is kind of long stays uh, more hygienic things so I, I guess like hygienic and the quality of cleanness and like all that stuff and following certain protocols I guess that's the new five star of maybe I I don't know but I think there will be a trend to be more selective in where you stay the quality the cleanness and maybe spend some time in one place rather than moving around very quickly mm -hmm. any ending thoughts on slow travel I have a long list a long list you want to yes. pick one thing from this long list one thing is obviously choosing a home that's my topic usually I take on so whenever we choose to go somewhere I'm the one who's looking for the home for the house for the home to stay and I have a long checklist what's important to me, to us, so that we can feel like home, away from home. Yeah, like washing machine, for example, it's important. And for some countries, it's like a no-brainer. It's like, of course, we have washing machine. And where other countries, it's like it's it's a like you really have to fish. Exclusive thing. Yes, to have a washing machine is very uh, unusual thing, like New York. For example we love New York City but yes. that was a, a bummer a bummer yeah um, I think another one which we kind of now probably increased through this uh, COVID situation is the infrastructure around us it's like the shopping wherever but we go we have to I look think, for this I think now we're looking differently at that because when we came here to Lisbon we stayed in Alfama which is the old part of the city and it's a really beautiful uh, district but there is almost no proper shopping shop uh, like not not like shopping like clothes or uh, clothes or something like that like groceries and like essentials you have lots of mini markets mm -hmm. uh, but no real uh, choice in, 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 in food and, and this kind of things so and where we stay now it's a totally different story even at a little village kind of I guess yeah, village outside of the city so yeah that's our experiences with slow travel and so far we're absolutely loving it and we would not go back to London 
just because of the COVID-19, we would carry on on traveling. Yeah, with or without COVID, I think we would just... And the next question comes often, what's next for us? Where do we want to go? Obviously, especially in these circumstances now. I mean, we're going to stay in Portugal so by the moment. Um, we're going to move to probably another place, but uh, it's... Um, thinking <laughs> thinking in progress yeah. but it's gonna be Portugal it's just a different area of Portugal where we would love to explore yeah at the moment yeah we have a couple of places in mind um, and hopefully we'll decide on one soon and then we'll share what's next like where where we spend the summer because yeah. uh, right now where we are right now we we've booked until the end of June somewhere so from July, uh, we, we, we want to change location a little bit, but it will definitely be Portugal. So we fell in love with this country. Uh, I mean, people would say like, oh, Lausa, you will love Portugal. And I'm like, yeah, okay. Um, I was not really, you know, I, I was like, okay, I have to experience it for myself. And when we arrived to Lisbon, first days, everything was beautiful. And but there is, I, I wouldn't say that it was like a wow. But then when we moved to Sesimbra, outside of Lisbon, and we start to explore nature, that's where Portugal really <laughs> took my breath away because the nature is outstanding. It's breathtaking. I just don't want to leave this country because it's so nice I think it will be difficult not just, not just nature it's like I think in general like it took us a little bit to get used to the attitude here like the the people culture yes. culture uh, it, how to explain that to understand people here we yeah i mean it's obviously the the language barrier like we don't speak portuguese uh, although lausa is uh, currently learning yeah. a little bit um but everyone is like people are very serious uh which is somehow rooted in the history um but they take things seriously they take things serious and it was actually a really nice and good thing during that crisis here that they take it serious and they seem to take like lots of things very serious compared to other countries where you think like when you see this is a joke uh, without mentioning any names um, but <laughs> after spending like two months three months here and you learn people to know personally like even they're very serious they are so lovely and they are so helpful and supportive and everyone has so good intentions so I can't praise them enough. So it's really our experience here in Portugal was or has been so far outstanding. So we love it. Okay, let's uh, wrap it up here. Uh, we'll share a couple of more impressions from Lisbon here. Oh yeah. Uh, and yeah, let us know your questions. We somehow want to make this a regular thing uh, I don't know once a month or once whatever depends on the questions we get let us know what you want uh, to know around our style of travel or in general like travel like if you want to travel and you have any questions or this area where we stay now Lisbon and Sesimbra uh, if you have any suggestions for us to go somewhere and share our experience from there uh, just pop them in the in the comments below and we are very happy to address them visit them and share our experience so until thank you then. so much for watching our videos we really appreciate that yeah it helps and like every comment that we get uh, puts a big smile on our face yes. and we really enjoy making videos it becomes kind of like a uh, yeah new hobby and obsession and <laughs> joy it's like yeah every video is a joy yes. and creation we feel like we have no idea 
was gonna come up every time we start to edit the video because it just transforms. Yeah, everything, the outcome is always very different to what we started out with, but that's a good thing. And I guess we have to learn a lot. We do our best, um, yeah. I hope you're enjoying it. <laughs> See you soon.